Hello boys and girls, my name is Danny Mac, and in this video I'm going to run through my process of turning this, well, actually this, into this. Now, the way it works in a big studio like Disney or Pixar is the design of a character is first done by a 2D artist, who then hands it over to a 3D artist whose job it is to translate the drawing into the 3D character we see on the screen. And of course this case is no different, and the model was based on this incredible drawing by Lyra Kirikova. If you've never seen Lyra's work, please check the link below to her Instagram, where she's created many wonderful pieces like this one, and I'd like to thank her once again for allowing me to reference her work. Since most of the questions I get asked on videos like these are regarding what app I use, I'll display the name of the app I'm using at the time on the screen, and you'll find a link to each one in the description below. Now please do note that this is an overview of the process and not a comprehensive tutorial. If you're looking for a comprehensive tutorial, do check out the rest of my channel because I've got loads. Let's jump into it. I started the sculpture with a sphere. Some people start with generic human models called base meshes that they then mould into the concept. But for stylized characters that have facial features far removed from a generic human, I think it's easier to start from scratch. While I'm obviously using the drawing as a point of reference, I also have another monitor which you can't see, showing lots more references of heads and facial features from lots of different angles. The idea is to look at these references and look at the drawing and try and reconcile the two. You'll notice I didn't jump straight into the features though, as I wanted to keep things clean and simple in these early stages. To save time, I actually skipped sculpting the ears as they weren't visible in the final piece. Now, this isn't something I would usually do as the ears help you to understand the rest of the face and without them it looks a little bit odd. But I got around this by modelling the basic hair shape really early on to cover up the fact that she's earless. For the rest of the face, I mostly followed what I demonstrate in my How to Sculpt a Stylized Head series. A nice thing you can do in ZBrush is, using a tool called Spotlight, you can put the drawing right on top of the sculpture and check that everything is lining up correctly. And again, I'll drop a link to the tutorial on how to do that. In this case, I realised that the top of the hair is far too low and I really should have made the head bigger to compensate, but I cheated and made the hair bigger instead. Later on, when I replaced this with realistic style hair, it meant I had to have a separate scalp floating above the head, but you never noticed, did you? Notice I'm still very slowly creeping up on the shapes, and I'm doing the best I can not to get ahead of myself. When sculpting a mouth that's open, even just slightly like this, it's a good idea to drop a cylinder in to represent the teeth. That way you've got a point of reference for the shape of the mouth, because remember, the teeth curve round, they aren't flat across the face. Also keep in mind that the top lip sits above the bottom lip. Here's a good example of reconciling anatomical reference with the drawing. I'm checking the planes of the lips on my second monitor, but I'm also noting that in the drawing, the top lip tucks in quite a distance from the corners of the mouth, which, given its stylized nature, isn't something I'd readily find an alternative reference for, if that makes sense. I always like to put some simple irises in quite early, as it helps position the eyeballs and eyelids more accurately, and it's a quick way to progress the sculpt and start adding a bit more life to it. The next stage is a process called retopology, but if you saw my recent workflow tutorial, you'll know sometimes I cheat this boring part by importing a mesh with good topology, wrap it around whatever I'm working on, and project details onto the new mesh, which is what you'll see me doing here. It can be a bit fiddly, but it usually saves a bit of time in the long run. I 
can then use that topology to make some eyelashes. So just there, I imported a teeth and gums asset to replace the cylinder. But since you can only really see the front two teeth, I just did away with the rest. Whenever I add colour to the face, I always add a little red to the cheeks and usually the nose too, so it looks and feels a little more alive. Again, checking the reference, and I've been slowly scaling the hair back without noticing. Like I say, I really should have resized the head, but never mind. Okay, now here I'm using the hair brush to start detailing the hair, because again, at this stage, I thought this is what it was going to look like. Oh, and if you want more information on how I approach creating hair like this, I'll drop in another card now to a tutorial series I made specifically on this. The idea behind this brush is basically I lay down a bunch of her strands as one and then vary each strand from there. Now I know I made a video on why I use Blender to do this now but sometimes I just can't be bothered to switch apps and use this method instead. Speaking of which, I will send the sculpted models over to Blender using a plugin called Gobi. If you want to know more about this plugin, again, check out the link in the description. The first thing I do in Blender is to set up some basic shaders and lighting. I created a texture map from the painting I did in ZBrush, but this won't be my final skin texture. I also replaced the eyes using the Danny Mac Eye Designer, which is a plugin I created specifically for this purpose. Even if nobody bought it, I'd still be happy I made it because it saves me a lot of time. A few tweaks of the sliders and we're cooking with gas. Then I jump back into ZBrush and start refining the skin texture. I'm only concerned with the skin itself at this point though because the face paint and dirt will be created with a different app called Substance Painter and rendered on top of this skin texture. Back in Blender, I tweak the shader parameters a bit, and I do also add things like displacement and specular maps, but I didn't include everything in the time lapse, otherwise, it would be far too long. Now we're painting in Substance Painter, as I mentioned, and I'm painting the stuff that sits on top of the skin on separate layers so that I can save it as a separate texture and combine it with the skin texture back in Blender. And you'll see a quick glimpse of how this looks in a second when we're back in Blender. And it was at this point I decided that if I'm pushing the skin this far, then I may as well push the hair too, and so decided on the more realistic style. I experimented for several days on how to achieve this, but in the end you'll notice I actually dropped back to a previous version of Blender. And this is mainly because I decided to use the HerNet plugin, which isn't available for the latest version of Blender. What this plugin allows me to do is use the edges on existing geometry to create her guides. So what you can see me doing right now is retopologizing my original her mesh with this in mind. Basically, the realistic her style is going to follow the direction of these squares, as we'll see in a moment.
in Blender, I make sure it's sticking inside the scalp, which, as I said earlier, is just floating in the sky, and add in the hair system. Now, I don't have the hairs growing from the entire scalp like I normally would, as it would be quite difficult to control, but as long as I ramp up the number of hair strands so high that there's no gaps, nobody will know the difference. Since this worked, I repeated the process for the fringe, or bangs as you might call them. Then I can simply import the floating scalp into my main scene file in Blender 2.8 and several hours of minor tweaking later and we have something that looks like this. That's it for this video, if you'd like to know more about creating 3D characters be sure to check out the rest of my channel and make sure you subscribe. And if you enjoyed this video please shove two thumbs up and leave me a filthy comment below. Peace.